Subhanallah. Thank you so much, Sayyid Haydar, for that recitation of the dua that our Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa early recited in the morning. It's just such a beautiful dua, MashaAllah. Assalamu alaikum, dear viewers, and welcome once again to Hijab and Etiquette. Now, today we're going to be discussing the topic of does the hijab put the Muslim woman in danger? Unfortunately, every other day we're hearing of sisters going out for their daily lives, going to work, going to school, going to university and being attacked, having people throw insulting comments at them and even having people try to tear the scar from their head. And of course, because of this, it has created a feeling of fear and tension within our communities towards the hijab. Now, once again, I am joined by Sister Masuma Jaffa. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing today? Alhamdulillah, thank you. Alhamdulillah. Um, would you say that by us observing the hijab, do you think that we're not integrating within the British society or the Western society? Um, I don't think it's the hijab that's not allowing us to integrate. I think it's the values. Mm -hmm. I think there are certain values which, within the Western society which I as a Muslim choose not to take on. Um, so, you know, and, and, and that is because there are certain things that I don't agree with mm -hmm. and that's my right mm -hmm. but I think integration is not about the clothes that I wear but about my attitude and my behavior and and the way that I talk to people so I can integrate and I I choose to integrate at the level that I want to integrate so for example I can I can sit there and talk to my work colleagues um, but when they decide to go out for a meal I can choose to join them as long as there's no alcohol there yeah um, I you know, I will then say to them, if, if they're going to a bar, I'll say, I'm sorry, I can't, I, you know, I, I will not come and join you there mm -hmm. because it's against my values. Mm -hmm. And if, if they're not comfortable with that, I, I don't think it's fair for them to put me in a position where I'm not comfortable with doing something yeah. um, that, you know, is being enforced on me. Yeah, a good friend wouldn't do that to you. Exactly. If you're uncomfortable with something, they're not going to force you or, you know, be act strangely with you because you're not happy with yeah, that. No, exactly. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, integration has to be done. I think we need to integrate, mm -hmm. but to the level that I want to. And, mm -hmm. and why do I have to take on your values? Why can't you take on some of my values? Mm -hmm. Who says which values are... Yeah. more important to or me, just my agree to disagree Ex as such. exactly yeah. yeah so you know mm -hmm. I'm not telling you what to do so don't tell me what to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that sort of principle it's it's you know it's like I'm not telling you not to go to the pub if that's what you choose to do but don't expect me to come there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know and, and it and it's I think it's sort of compromising and, and sort of if I if I'm not gonna eat because it's a non -ha non halal restaurant then and you want me to come out with you then why not go to a halal restaurant what difference does it make whether you have halal food or not halal food yeah so you know it's it's sort of i think integration has to happen from both ends so mm -hmm. i think you know both of us have to sort of come together mm -hmm. um, rather than me having to give up to take on the western values mhm mm mhm mm yeah i i honestly I think that we as Muslims, we put too much pressure on ourselves to kind of fit in as such. It's like, you know, a good example of this was just last month, we had the uh, Tesco Christmas advert and which featured Muslims, you know, buying food ready for Christmas. And there were individuals who turned around and said like, oh, what right have they, you know, appearing in this Christmas advert? They're Muslims, they don't even celebrate. And it's like, hang on a minute you want us to integrate within society and respect you know the traditional christian um festivals yet when we do that you complain yeah. like, what what can we do what can we do with such mentality but i think as as a, a population i think we are moving forward mm -hmm. so just like we are respecting uh, christmas mm -hmm. because that's that's the christian um 
festival, mm -hmm. um, there are adverts that are to do with my Ramzan. Yes, and I think yeah. that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think it's really nice that you know w that things that we r we hold dear to, to us mm -hmm. are being respected. And I, I know, I, you know, again, I know people will say, "Oh, it's a money making." You know, it's it's for money that they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Fine, that may be their reason, but you know what? At least I'm being acknowledged as a Muslim. A I'm helped, part yeah. of the community now mm. that you're actually taking into consideration that you know what? I do, um, I do give to the community, yes. whether it's my money, my time, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And and you're acknowledging that, and I think that's beautiful. It is beautiful, and like it helps us out, doesn't it? Because you know when we go shopping, Tesco's, Morrison's, Waitrose, if you're a bit more upmarket, <laughs> you know, like you can go there and just like, yeah, I can get my halal meat, and like I can yeah. get decorations for Ramadan and Eids, and not just for Muslims, but also like for Jews and yeah. Hindus. Like we're just, I I just love the fact, particularly in this country, that we're being more helpful and more understanding of the diversity of the people that live here. And I think I think that's really really important, and I think you know it it takes away that intolerance because now you're actually trying you know understanding where mm -hmm. I'm coming from. You may not agree with it, and that's your right not mm -hmm. to agree with it, but at least you're understanding where I'm coming from, and I, and I think that's really nice. Mm -hmm. And I think you know you I mean you started off at the beginning talking about the fact that you know there are. Muslim women who are being attacked and mm -hmm. and abused and so forth, you know, verbally, physically. Mm -hmm. um, you're always going to have a handful of people who are going to do things like that. I know when I was growing up, I was not only the the only Muslim but the only Asian person in my school. Oh wow! And um, I was constantly picked on because of my colour. Wow, um, I couldn't do anything about that. Mm. You know, it's like I couldn't change my colour. Mm -hmm. um, so I learned how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And again, if I see my hijab as part of who I am, then I won't take it off because some silly person is, you know, is, is put, making me uncomfortable. Yeah. This is who I am. Yeah. And I'm going to learn to be able to handle you mm -hmm. and, and, your, and your pettiness. You yes. know, it's... it's, it's and, and I find that usually other people will actually stand up and help you if someone is being silly mm -hmm. and, and throwing abuse at you. Mm -hmm. um, I think most people are, are quite tolerant and, and are nice people. Yeah, yeah. It's this idea that like, if you were being attacked, you would want someone to stand up for yeah. you. So if you see someone who's in trouble, like, you, would. you can't help but like want to get involved as such yeah. when you see that injustice taking for sure. place. For sure. um, so basically like the sisters in our community, you know, many of us, w we're afraid, you know, we're afraid of going out and doing our daily routines because we're afraid of getting attacked. Now, are, do you have any practical advice for sisters who um, to stay safe and make them feel a bit more secure? I think like any sister, I don't think it's to do with just being a hijabi. I think as a woman, you do feel a little bit more afraid mm -hmm. in, in the world that we're living in at the moment. Yes. Um, so I think, you know, knowing um, how to take care of yourself um, just just even little things like walking with confidence, being aware of you know the, the environment around you, being aware who's with you, who, who you know who's who's around you, um, uh, you know self defense. Yes. Again, is it, you know knowing self defense is really really important because it gives me confidence. Mm -hmm. Then I know how to react when something horrible happens to me. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I think as a Muslim woman, I think. Um, I feel a little bit more confident because I feel like God is by my side. I know he's yes. by everyone's side, yes. but I feel that connection more. Mm -hmm. um, and I think realizing that gives me that confidence as well. And to ensure, you know, and, and we have such, again, powerful du'as, mm -hmm. um, which we can recite, mm -hmm. um, you know, verses of the Holy Quran, Aytul Kursi, the four oh, calls yes. and things like that, yes. which we can use, you know, taking out sadaqah, things like that, which, again, will help mm -hmm. us, you know, help protect us. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so we have lots of things which we can do in order to ensure that, you know, we're, we're protecting ourselves as much as possible. But to use this as a reason to take off our hijab doesn't make sense to me at all no. because what you're doing is you're allowing those handful of silly people to win 
Yeah. You're get you're allowing them mm. to dictate to you how you should live your life. Mm -hmm. um, and you ha where's that trust that Allah will help and take care of you? Yes. And at the end of the day, we have our graves. Those idiotic people, they're not going to be there in the graves with us when we're being questioned about our lives. So why, why do we give them that weight as such? Because at the end of the day, you know, we all have our own individual graves and these idiotic people that you know are trying to bring us down they're not going to be with us in the grave when we're being questioned about our lives so why do we give them such weight and precedence in our lives and it's just i i myself i swear by ayatul kursi i mm. i swear to god like i think that those few verses i think they impact on my daily life so much and as well, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at your side. You know, when we, um, when we commemorate the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, when we think about how brave he was in Karbala, when he was standing in front of that enemy army, you know, Ali al Akbar was gone, Abbas was gone, Habib was gone, all his friends, his nephews, his companions, they were all gone, and he was all alone. And we ask ourselves, how did he have the courage to go out there and give up his life? It was because he knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was beside him. And he knew that it didn't matter what would happen to us in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sees everything and he will act on everything. And no injustice will be spared on the day of judgment. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I don't think, I, again, you know, you can't control what other people say and do, mm -hmm. but you can choose how you behave yes. and what you say and do. Mm -hmm. And again, a lot of the times I think knowing that, you know, there are certain people that there's no point trying to explain the hijab to, just ignore them just walk away from it. It doesn't mm -hmm. make you a coward. It doesn't make you less of a person. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you can't answer them. It's just you choose not to because they're not going to listen. Yes. You know, they're, they're coming at you from a perspective of they've made up their minds. They're not going to listen to what they you're going to say. Best. Yeah. So what's mm -hmm. the point? Mm -hmm. And actually just, you know, if they're yelling at you, just 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 walk away. Yes. Just move away. Just go make sure you're, you know, you're in places where there are other people around. So mm -hmm. again, you don't feel that you know you're on your own yes um and and it's realizing you know when people want to come and talk to me mm -hmm. about my hijab i'm open to that mm -hmm. but when you're going to sit there and start the conversation by shouting at me and shouting abuse at me mm -hmm. i'm not going to be okay with that i'm not going to sit there and no. listen to that i'm going to you know i'm just going to walk away and mm -hmm. and you're the one who looks silly not me yeah you yeah. know it doesn't it doesn't mean i don't you know no one looking at that would think oh she doesn't know how to answer that's why she's walking away they're going to be looking at that person and thinking you know how why is he having a go at her for for her choosing to dress the way she wants to dress yeah th there's absolutely nothing productive about it and no one deserves to be yelled at for not such a stupid thing you're not hurting anybody by the way that you dress in the same way you know i don't know like a, a girl walking down the street in a little summer dress like you know she's not hurting anybody by doing that that's her personal choice and um I, it's interesting, um, your statement reminded me of what Imam Ali salam said when he told us that there's no point in arguing with a fool because when yeah. you start arguing with a foolish person, you've, al yeah, you've brought down to that level and also you've already lost because yeah. like, they're so set in their mentality, they're not going to listen to anything that you have to say, unfortunately. Exactly, yeah, exactly. I think you need to choose your battles. Oh God, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, I guess the, the final thing that I would like to address is, you know, in the circumstance where a sister, you know, might feel like she is in danger or or Billah, like she has been attacked, like what what should she do in that situation? I think again, like any other uh, any other sister, you know, whether she's wearing hijab or not, the way that she would react. So ensuring that this does not um, dictate how she's going to behave from now on and like she's going to you know not go out anywhere she's going to become very self-conscious uh, you know you need to ensure that this person doesn't mm -hmm. dictate the rest of your life so what it should do is make you um, maybe take self-defense lessons um, you know build your confidence um, 
ensure you go out with a group of people rather than mm. on your own. Make sure you don't go into places where, you know, um, which seem a bit um, dangerous to yeah. a certain extent. So mm -hmm. again, being aware of where you are and, mm. you know, who's around you is really, really important. Mm -hmm. um, and, and talking it through. I think a lot of um, when something bad has happened to us, we internalize it. And I think by talking it through, it does help us move past it. Yes. Um, and again, the best thing to do is talk it through with God. Mm. Actually tell him how you feel, tell him what's happened to you. Use him as your counselor. He's the best counselor there, oh, there is, and it doesn't oh, cost you yes. anything either. Absolutely, <laughs> that's the best thing. <laughs> so, you know, and, 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 and ask him to give you the confidence to be able to continue with your life in the way that he would want you to continue with your life. That's really lovely, sister, and um, your, your advice is so useful. Inshallah, I, I think I'll be using some of the things that we've talked about today. But thank you so much for appearing on Hijab and Etiquette with me today. Um, next up, my dear viewers, um, your fit questions will be answered, inshallah.